we don't actually have any evidence that life exists elsewhere. At this point, I would say it's a faith-based question. I think physicists have somewhat of a bias that everything is kind of simple and then they think life is really, really difficult. So it, it has to be rare in some sense. I agree that this is something which we should investigate. It's one of those things where the payoff could be so huge that it would be stupid not to look at it, right? Another topic that I get a lot of questions about, and a lot of my fans listening and watching you um, will want to know, something you don't really talk that much about. Um, you probably have a video about it. We'll get to your video. Uh, uh, Ovra and your your catalog in in a, in a bit, but uh, and that's aliens, uh, which which are in the news almost every day now, uh, ranging from you know people like past guest Tom DeLong, you know claiming he has uh, recovered uh, you know portions of an alien spaceship when he came on my podcast, uh, which was quite uh, quite interesting to to go down the rabbit hole with him and find out actually he can't verify exactly that he's owned it. Anyway, uh, but he is, I give him credit, he brought a lot of this, you know, he was a musician for this band Blink-182. He lives in San Diego, great guy, fun guy. But, you know, he kind of got this into the attention of the media uh, about five, six years ago. And now it's risen all the way up to my friend and, uh, and colleague and, and president of the Simons Foundation, uh, Professor David Spurgle. And uh, David is now co-leading this NASA panel commissioned by uh, the, the, the chief administrator on down to investigate the role of what they call UAPs, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. But that could include UFOs, objects. It could include evidence and data. Uh, of course, I've had on Avi Loeb and, and other people uh, as well. Uh, but I want to—I haven't asked you about this. Um, where do you come down? Do you do you believe that there are uh, you know credible uh, bits of evidence suggesting that Earth? Well, first of all, the aliens exist. Uh, other life forms exist. Let's start there. Do you think life exists outside of the Earth? And is that a scientific question or is it a faith-based question? Well, we, we don't actually have any evidence that life exists elsewhere. So um, at this point, I would say it's a faith-based question. Um, so if you want to know what I believe, I believe the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. That's mostly because I, I think that it, it isn't as difficult to create complex complexity um, as physicists like to think. Uh, I think physicists have somewhat of a bias that everything is kind of simple. And then they think life is really, really difficult. So it, it has to be rare in some sense. Um, uh, I, I think that's not correct, uh, but of course I don't know. Now, if you're asking about any particular type of evidence, right. I have to admit I, I haven't followed this at all. Personally, I haven't encountered any particularly um, you know, convincing evidence, um, but yeah, I haven't really looked into it. Now, are you in the camp or perhaps not in the camp <clears throat> of those like our mutual friend, Eric Weinstein, uh, who suggest things such as uh, the fact that we should devote some substantial resources to the investigation of the phenomenon because it might reveal new physics that could then be used to solve many predicaments that we have on Earth, namely, how do we get off the Earth without you know, as he says, you know, putting chemical oxidants inside of a phallic shaped tube and shooting it uh, to Mars, as as our friend Elon wants to do. Uh, but would, would you say that if, if we did find evidence of not not just alien life, like slime mold on, you know, on Proxima Centauri B, but if we found technological, intelligent life, that that would open up a new portal into physics uh, that we would otherwise be ignorant to? Do you think that's even a conceivable uh, prospect for humanity? Well, it's certainly conceivable in, in, in the sense that it's, I can imagine it. Um, if the question is how likely is it, I have no idea. I mean, I, I agree that this is something which we should investigate. Now, if, if <laughs> I think what we said was we should invest significant resources because it brings up the question, like how significant, right? What, what amounts are we talking about? Uh, and, and I'm not really in a position to make that kind of judgment. Uh, as I said, I haven't really followed it. I would, I would generally agree. Yeah, I mean, it's a really important thing. It's one of those things where the payoff could be so huge that it would be stupid not to look at it, right?
Yeah, I think that that's absolutely true uh, as well. And yet, you know, the question of the the level of um, of fervor uh, about it is kind of unmatched by the evidence. And I want to run an argument by you that I've used on other scientists that are you know more involved with this um, pheno- you know phenomena and even the the concept of it. Uh, and that's <clears throat> this concept called panspermia which was originally, it sounds dirty, but it's not. Don't worry, we won't get our YouTube demonetized. Uh, But the the concept was that life on Earth, it doesn't solve the origin of life problem, but it solves the origin of life on Earth problem. And that's by these little objects called meteorites. By the way, you can get your own meteorite if you subscribe to my mailing list, briankeating.com slash list. And if you subscribe to Sabina's mailing list, maybe she'll send you like a theory or she'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll tell you that you're full of gobbledygook. Uh, but you should subscribe to that. Sabina Hassenfelder has a wonderful mailing list. We'll put links to that below. But, um, but the theory of panspermia posits that life on Earth originated because uh, objects like these meteorites had uh, chemical uh, life, uh, exist uh, molecules or precursors to life or even life itself, and they can survive and they can land on, on the Earth. And then that causes Darwinian evolution to sprout, right? So that's the theory. But I invert that argument. And I say, if that's true, then we should see life on uh, on Europa or on Titan or on some other moon or, or asteroid or something, because this we've had life on Earth for 4 billion years. Uh, it's It only took a couple hundred million years for life to get kicked off. And often Earth gets hit by meteor meteoroids and those blast off these same chunks of earth including life and they should be floating around the solar system for literally billions of years and some of them should have do land on mars we know that they've landed on mars because we have stuff from mars that landed on earth anyway sabina this is a long-winded question but do you believe that the lack of evidence of life from earth on another body in our solar system can provide some bayesian prior on the existence or the ability for panspermia to take place. In other words, for life to get uh, spread throughout the cosmos as soon as it gets created. Well, of course, in principle, yes. Is that but we don't have a terrible lot of evidence about uh, you know, my, my, microbial life on other planets. Like, we've just about made it to Mars and maybe to the moon. But what, what do we know about the other planets? And then there's this whole issue about the habitable zone, right? If you're only looking at planets in the habitable zone, then this planet is it, <laughs> right? So uh, I'm, I'm not sure how useful this evidence is. 